think about this. Could you imagine? Late, let's say, boom. Dana's like, all right, I'll give you guys the immediate rematch. I want to see Sean kick your ass again. But Aljamain wins. Then what? Then what? Because I don't think that Aljamain or anyone really right now is thinking about that. Everyone's like, okay, yeah, DC is like, oh yeah, he deserves his immediate rematch. But what happens if Aljamain becomes a champ again? Marab is not going to fight him. So Marab has to yet again wait for someone to defeat Aljamain to fight the champ? Are you kidding me? Sean admitted, like, yeah, if it's not Cheeto, then it's, it's got to be Marab because he's number one. But he did not say, I will rematch Aljo. I am open to a rematch with Aljo. He didn't say it. He didn't say it. And we all know. But the champ wants, the champ gets. What's up, MMA fans? My name is Anesia Marquez, and I am coming to you with a new video. I wanted to hop on here today and talk about the whole situation going on with Aljamain, Sean, and Marab. So I woke up the other day to Aljamain posting um, an Instagram post, basically, where he tripled down on calling for a rematch with Sean. I already recorded a video about this topic the other day, but I didn't end up posting it, and I'm glad that I didn't because I ended up seeing this post and as well DC actually filmed his own video about the situation which I watched so we'll discuss his take afterwards. I want to preface this by saying I am an Aljo fan. He's from Uniondale, Long Island, New York, like I am. And when I heard he was fighting Sean, who's from Phoenix, Arizona, I was thrilled that a reigning Phoenician and New Yorker were going to be fighting one another. I lived in Phoenix for three years, aka Vegas's ugly cousin, before it became too much for me and I had to leave. Geographically though, Arizona is absolutely beautiful. If you've never been to a western state, I highly recommend it as being your first option. The views are incredible and the sunsets are one of a kind. Because it is a newer state as well, like everything out there is all built within the last 30 years, so everything's really brand new. Unlike in New York where things are literally hundreds of years old, and decrepit. However, however, be warned about the people and the culture out there if you're planning to move. If you're from somewhere like California, you'll probably fit right in and you'll be fine. But if you're from somewhere very different, like me coming from New York, it will definitely be a culture shock. Yeah. Anyways, oh, let's let's stop talking about Phoenix now. Um, just to give you an idea of my excitement for this fight having lived in both phoenix and arizona knowing kind of the culture and the life that sean grew up around and obviously knowing the culture and the life that aljamain grew up around it was kind of like a clash of my two worlds so i was really excited for this fight and of course because i am from new york even though i did live in phoenix i of course was gonna go root for aljamain so much so am i an aljamain fan that i went to ufc 288 to watch aljamain defend his belt against henry and i even sported a yankees jersey to highlight my enthusiasm and support for aljo knowing that aljo successfully defended himself against an olympic gold medalist wrestler made me excited because i expected aljo to honestly immediately rush for the takedown at ufc 292 and for sean to play his ground game which unfortunately he didn't get the chance to do at the least if aljamain had a different game plan i certainly was wasn't expecting his ego to let him overextend. Fuck. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot to turn off my AC. Speaking of things being old and decrepit in New York, 90% of the apartment buildings here are still very old, so there is no central air in my building, and we all have to use AC units out of the window. And it's currently 93 degrees today, so apologies for that noise in the background. I just remembered to turn it off. So from here on out, you will not be hearing a vibrating sound. Okay, let's continue. Yeah, so I wasn't expecting him to, you know, fall into Sean's trap. I thought he had a higher fight IQ than that, especially against someone like Sean that in every one of his fights, you're always hearing the commentators say, and it's pretty evident just in how he fights, that he moves around a lot he very much will be pew, 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 back and forth side to side up and down down going up like he's all over the place right so knowing that and knowing that he's caught so many people 17 i'm proud of how many knockouts he has how many knockouts does he actually have okay so 12 of sean's fights he's won by ko tko um and he has currently 18 fights under his belt 
So, knowing that as Aljamain, the decision king, I'm really surprised that he took his chances. But you know what? I'm not a fighter. I don't know. Just my opinion. So the fact that now Aljamain has been tripling down on calling for a rematch with Sean after being humbled in this fight is crazy to me. If I were in his position, the obvious thing to do to me would be to advocate for the one person that has been in my corner and has been my cheerleader this whole time and honestly put my own interests aside. The fact that Aljamain is advocating for a rematch and basically throwing a potential Marab and Sean fight on the back burner as a second option is so beyond wild to me. He's saying he's not going to move up to 145 even though he said win, lose, or tie. I'm moving up to 145. And then he wanted to say, oh, you know, if Sean was able to catch me like that, what would Volk do to me? And to me, I don't really think that logic is really valid because... Even if he was able to get past Sean and defeat Sean, what makes him think that Volk is comparable in any way to Sean O'Malley? One, he's heavier, right? Like he's fighting at a heavier weight class. That being the case, I don't, I'm not saying that him going up to 145 would be his end all. He's Alexander Volkanovsky, who also in my opinion, won that fight against Islam, but you know, that's not for this video. So I said, you know what, okay. I'm he, not sure I he wants to say that in the Octagon interview, fine. But I was waiting to see what he would say on social media. It just really rubbed me the wrong way seeing this post. Me and a bunch of other people in the comments were mentioning Marab and how he deserves his shot after sitting on the sidelines for his friend this whole time. He did fight in March against Peter Jan, but that was six months ago. And realistically, seeing Aljamain's turnaround time, I'm sure Marab could have had a really quick turnaround time too, but he didn't and he said, I'm gonna support my friend because in May, which was only two months after March, Aljamain was fighting Henry and then only three months later after that, he was fighting Sean. So the last six months that Marab hasn't been fighting, he's been on the sidelines championing on Aljamain as a great and loyal friend, which is an amazing thing and I love that. But again, people were just kind of pointing out the fact that it's not really fair to Marab after all this time for Aljamain to once again put him on the back burner and essentially tell him he needs to wait. That it's still Aljamain, Aljamain still has got the spotlight and he's he needs to wait. Because we all know that those two are not going to fight each other. Like if you're not a casual, you're not even entertaining the idea of Aljamain and Marab fighting each other. You know it's not going to happen. They already said it, they're teammates, they're friends, it's not going to happen. And that's the reason why... Aljamain said that he would move up to 145 because he said I already went through the entire Bantamweight division I defended my title multiple times even if I do lose at this point the only person that he would really have To prove something to would be Sean, but he literally said that at that point I want Marab to sweep the division I want Marab to be the one to be the champ in Bantamweight and I'm gonna move up to 145 and see what I can do there and so the fact that he then completely changed his mind and is now calling for a rematch? If, if that were me, I would be really tight at that friend and I'd be like, we need to sit down and talk about this friendship because it feels very one-sided in my opinion. You know, mainly because my heart breaks for Marab. He came from a small country, Georgia, and his English is not that great. He's still learning English. He's someone that is like if Aljamain is taking a chance at MMA, like this guy's really taking a chance. Like I always feel for immigrants when they are coming to the US to compete in the UFC because like we hear so often, a lot of times fighters have to put their UFC career on hold because of visa issues or because of immigration issues, you know, whatever they may be. And they're not able to literally come to the US and fight in the UFC. I just really hope that Aljamain isn't taking advantage of his kindness and his niceness because I did meet the both of them at Aljamain's open workouts and Marab was literally a sweetheart. He had nothing but a big smile on his face. He was so kind to everyone, talking to everyone. Not to say that Aljamain wasn't doing the same, but you know, you can just feel someone's vibe and, and Marab just is such a likable person. And he's such a genuine person too. Like I literally do not know either of these men from a pot to piss in, but from my interactions with them, 
and from what I see goes on on social media, I can confidently say that I think Morab is a very likable person and he's the type of friend everyone would want to have. And so considering the fact that Morab has a lot more on the line, personally I would say, than Aljamain does, him being from another country, his career means absolutely everything to him. And so for him to be so okay with putting his career on hold for his friend to me is also I, I just feel for Marab because I know that he's doing it out of the kindness of his heart and I know that he's genuinely being a good person but I have to agree with Dana on this one and that's not something I say very often but when he was doing that press conference for the contender series and you know he was asked about the situation and he said You're in a business, like the UFC is a business. Maybe it's just not for Marab to be fighting if he's gonna put his friendship so far above his own career. And again, it's okay to an extent. Like the only time I feel like it's okay to put your career on hold is in a situation like with Khabib, right? Like his father died, he said, I'm done. Like, I'm gonna retire, right? That's respectable because his father passed away. But this is a guy that you met because you just happened to be a part of this team in Long Island that you became really good friends with and you're putting your career on hold for him? Not something I personally would do. I'm not that nice. Um, or naive. I think Marab is just a little bit naive and I say that with all the love in my heart. With all the love in my heart, I say that. Marab, I think you're just being a little bit naive. I say that because to me, this is starting to look less like a friendship and more like a business transaction. It's looking more like when people say, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. I feel like maybe Aljamain could possibly be threatened by Marab or just see him as a potential enemy that he doesn't want to have to face and DC said this as well that they train with each other so they both know each other's strengths and weaknesses better than they would any other fighter in their division right because they literally train with each other and they're with each other every day in the gym so he was saying you know maybe Marab is actually afraid to fight Aljo and doesn't think he could defeat Aljo so maybe that's why he's okay with just going along with all of this and saying okay I'll wait on the sidelines because I don't want to fight you and I don't think I could beat you, so I'm not going to. But I think it could go the other way around too, because Marab's not the number one contender in the division for nothing, you know what I mean? To me, it's just a little bit messed up. Um, I think personally that Aljamain should just sit out for at least six months, chill out. Like, to me, clearly he let his fight IQ slip during his fight against Sean. So to me, I would personally, personally, and even he said this in his Octagon interview, he needs to go back to the drawing board, figure his stuff out, figure everything out, really think like, what's my next smartest move? Let me draw a graph of like, if I fight this person, this person, this person, what would be my tactic in each fight? Let me train for each of those possibilities and then let me make my announcement. Let me come to a decision let me get back in the octagon, you know? And I know that he has time to do this because Aljamain is also a star now. He has the money and he has the time and he has the resources to just chill out for six months to a year and figure his life out. Sean himself took two year break and he came back and look at where he's at now. So sometimes taking a break, I feel like Aljamain is afraid that he's gonna lose all of his hype and lose all of this momentum that he has if he takes any sort of break. But I think that honestly could be his downfall actually if he just rushes into another fight with Sean. Like he already, that's the thing too that doesn't make sense to me is one of the points that he made is like, oh, if I lose, like, you know, I just want everyone to remember that I did just fight Henry three months before this and 
I didn't personally agree to it, but Dana White kind of threw me into this fight and forced me to do it and signed me onto it and announced it before I even agreed to fight. Dana White supposedly threw him into this fight, so it's like, if he threw you into this fight, why are you now going to throw yourself into another rematch with Sean if you just lost? Like, Aljamain, you just lost this fight. And now you're willing to rush into an immediate rematch with the guy that you just lost to. If you just lost to someone, what makes you, again, it's his ego. That he thinks that he could just up and go and fight him again and then beat him. Because to me, the reason why he wants to rematch is because he thinks he can beat him this time. That, oh, I know what I did wrong. I know what I have to do now. So I'm going to be able to beat him this time around. And that's his ego talking. Aljamain, stop letting your ego talk. Stop letting your ego talk. Like, seriously, for the love of your own career, stop letting your ego get in the way. Dude, it's not going to kill you to sit on the sidelines for a few months or a year. It's not going to kill you. I promise you, I promise you, it's not going to kill you. It literally will not kill you. To be on the sidelines, to chill the fuck out, and to let whoever else need to do whatever else they need to do. You don't need to be in the spotlight all the time. So now, let's get more into what DC said. Actually, one last thing. Aljamain even said it himself that, you know, we're in the business of you either crush a man's dreams or you have your dreams crushed. At the end of the day, I know we're all chasing the same dreams. And like I said before, sometimes in this sport, you got to crush another man's dreams to accomplish your own. That phrase that Aljamain said has been engraved in my brain from the moment I heard him say it because he's right and that goes for anything else in life when you want to accomplish something in life and you have your competition in front of you you're either going to crush their dreams or you're or they're going to crush yours right it's like kill or be killed out here so him knowing that how can he expect Marab to happily sit on the sidelines for his own career couldn't be me could not be me so now let's talk about DC's take because I love DC and I've always respected his opinion. And he has, like I said, he has the idea that these guys train with each other. So, you know, they may know this could be a secondary reason in addition to their friendship why they don't want to fight each other, right? The point where DC has a different take than I do is that he thinks it does make sense for Aljamain to call for an immediate rematch against Sean. He thinks that it should happen. And his reasoning for that is because it's happened in the past before where you see fighters like this get immediate rematches. So let's take a look at just who DC is actually referring to when he says other fighters have gotten their immediate rematches. So I actually found this perfect article, which is funny, um, written not too long ago in March by someone named Zach Placid. I'm probably saying his name wrong. So the most recent immediate title match that comes to mind personally even without looking at this list is Alex Pereira in Israel Adesanya. Izzy lost to Alex at UFC 281 in New York City and got his immediate rematch at UFC 287 just five months later. Personally this immediate rematch made sense to me simply for the storyline because of their history and their rivalry that they've had since they were kickboxers. You know, they both competed as kickboxers professionally before they moved on to MMA, where Alex notoriously beat Adesanya again and again and again and again, okay? Then again, for the fourth time they fought, but this time it was the first time in the MMA, and Alex beat him again at arguably the biggest venue in the country, on the biggest stage in the world at MSG. So that immediate rematch was like, no-brainer, the fans wanted it, Everyone was excited for it. Of course, you're gonna want to see this fight again. I literally flew down to Miami, which I have a vlog on it. I flew down to Miami to watch this fight. Like I went to Miami in the beginning of April just for this fight. If this fight was not happening at that particular time, I would not have gone to Miami. I even posted on my Instagram story when I found out when they announced that there was gonna be a rematch. They didn't announce the location, but they did announce the rematch. I literally posted and I said, yep, I don't care. I don't care where it is. I'm going to this fight no matter where it is, because I watched this fight at a bar with my dad and him and I screamed, as you can tell. I am Brazilian, um, and I'm also Puerto Rican. 
but I'm Brazilian Puerto Rican and so of course I'm gonna root for Alex right like and so when I found out about this rematch, I was like, oh yes, I need to go. I'm there, I'm there. I don't care where it is. When it was Miami, I was like, couldn't have been a more perfect place for this fight to be. Flight from New York to Miami is, there's millions of those flights every single year. I can hop on one of them. Miami is a little bit pricey like New York, but again, it's pricey like New York, so I'm used to that. And it's Miami, the beach, the weather, the vibe. I was living for it. So I was like, I'm literally, when they announced that it was happening in Miami, I kid you not, like I kid you not, I went on my computer and I bought the tickets that same moment. They announced it, boom, UFC 287 is taking place in Miami on April 8th. I bought my tickets for whatever, April 3rd or 4th, I think, for that Wednesday. So I could go to each event Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the fight on Saturday, and I left on Sunday. I went. I said, I'm not playing around. I'm going to this fight. I don't care. So I went, and I bought my tickets. You know, so it was arguably one of the biggest fights and fight cards of the year. And I was there. So let's keep reading on. The next most recent immediate rematch was between Kamar Usman and Leon Edwards. Usman lost to Edwards both times, and each bout happened seven months apart. Usman won their very first fight against each other in 2015 when they were both rookies and fighting in the early prelims. This was your classic trilogy, similar to that of Alexandre Pantoja and Brandon Moreno, and even the quadrilogy of Davidson Figueiredo and Brandon Moreno. Pantoja and Moreno's fights happened years apart, however. After the two had gone and fought other people in their division, same with Moreno and Figueiredo, their fights happened once a year, 2020, 2021, 22, and 23. Could Sterling and O'Malley become one of these classic trilogy fighters? Yes. Not saying that they'll never fight again and that they shouldn't fight again. But I just personally think calling for an immediate rematch is unnecessary. Mm, again, mainly because of the fact that there's someone waiting on the sidelines for his shot. If Marab wasn't in the picture, go ahead. Fight Sean 1,700,000 times. I don't care. But think about your friend, dude. Like, your friend's been thinking about you this whole time. Think about your friend. Give him the same energy that he's been giving you. So the rest of this list of fights in this article, they're very reminiscent of some great bouts. So I included the link in my description. But honestly, when I look at this list though, and I see these names, they're all like superstar names. Dude, even when I was first getting into the UFC, I would immediately recognize because these fighters are so notorious with incredible and memorable fighting styles. And honestly, personally to me, I hate to say it, Aljamain is Obviously the greatest Bantamweight of all time, you can say. You know, he has defended his belt numerous times. He's been a champ. He has all the accolades. You know, I'm afraid to share my opinion on this because I feel like people are gonna say, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. But would you personally compare Aljamain Sterling to Stipe, Vitor Belfort, Frankie Edgar, BJ Penn, Max Holloway, Jose Aldo, Rose Namajunas, Joanna Jezedrick, I never know how to say her name, Volkanovski, Amanda Nunes. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I just, maybe I've been reading a little bit too much about what people have been saying on Twitter as well about Aljamain. I kind of have to agree with them a little bit. I just don't think, I mean like, obviously Aljamain's gonna be remembered because of what he's done for the Bantamweight division. You know, there's no arguing that, but is he an Amanda Nunes? Is he a Vitor Belfort? Is he DC? DC is on this list himself. Is he a Max Holloway? Is he a Jose Aldo? Like, very, very tough questions. Maybe I'm still a little bit of a newbie to, you know, in the UFC, but uh, fortunately, as things stand now, I just think that Aljamain's in the spotlight because he's active. But if people are already on Twitter, you know, this is Twitter and people love to be trolling. But if people are already sharing the sentiment that they feel like Conor McGregor is on his fall off and that he's kind of over the peak of his career, just because he's inactive, what does that mean for Aljamain? What does that mean for Aljamain? Because Conor McGregor is literally the biggest superstar in MMA that the UFC has ever seen. 
Aljamain is not on that level. He is not on that level. So because Aljamain's not on that level, to me, the second he becomes an active, he'll obviously be talked about because you can't ignore a champion, right? If someone's a champion and you're talking about the history of the Bantamweight division, you can't just not mention him. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think he's as big as a star as he's making himself out to be. And so I just think in due time, he'll be mentioned in passing. That's just how I feel. I just feel like he's a fighter that'll be mentioned in passing. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe his career will take him places in the future that right now someone will look at this clip in a few years and say, you are so wrong. And I hope I am. I hope that he can prove me so wrong that I sound so stupid right now. But as things stand right now, with Sean O'Malley coming into the division and doing what he did, and walking out to that song, if you say what you say, you are a superstar, then have no fear. Honestly, that gave me chills. When he walked out to that song, I literally had chills and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the perfect song. Like, oh my gosh. And then when he won, it was just like, ooh, the chills up and down my spine. Like, if Adesanya played that song, when he walked out against Bedeta, same thing. At the end of the night, I would have been like, chills, like, this is giving me chills. It gave me chills. He's a superstar of the Bantamweight division now. The Shook Show has arrived. Um, and that's just the reality. Like, I feel like Al Jermaine wants, he wants that to be him so badly. But unfortunately, it's not. It's just not. So. Let's go back to DC's take. He goes on to give Aljo the benefit of the doubt that it's hard to let go of that championship lifestyle, right? Which I think is kind of what I'm alluding to when I say that he wishes that that were him. Because he was a champ, but he didn't get that notoriety. He didn't get that love. He didn't get that support when he was a champ. He has been getting nothing but hate. Being a champ, I don't know why, honestly, I don't get it, but he has been getting that hate. And so I'm sure it hurts him to see his successor get all this love, all this support, all these accolades, and to be getting these opportunities the way that Sean is getting, being in the position that Aljamain had been in for so long. You know, I'm sure that hurts. I'm sure it burns. I'm sure it stings. I'm sure it sucks. But I don't know what to say about that. That's just the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. Um... And, you know, life isn't fair. But just because it's hard to let go of that championship life, again, doesn't mean that you put yourself before such a loyal friend like Marab. So now, the other thing <laughs> that I think is what's going on in Aljamain's little mastermind up there, in his little mega mind, is he's probably thinking this, okay... If I move up to 145, like I said I was, and if Marab ends up fighting Sean, which he eventually will, right? Like, if Marab is going to continue his career, he is eventually going to fight Sean. Like, that fight's going to happen one day. So, if Aljamain's over here at 145. Marab fights Sean. Say he beats Sean. Then what? Aljamain can't come back to the Bantamweight division because they already said... They weren't going to fight each other. Unless, which I think is something that Aljamain would do, is if uh, if Marab becomes Bantamweight champ, and Aljamain's up here at 145, or he's over here on the sidelines, I honestly think that Aljamain would say, fuck it, I want my Bantamweight title back, I'm going to fight my friend. And... If that were to happen, like if I am literally predicting the future right now and saying that Sean loses to Marab, Marab becomes a champ, Aljamain is going to get salty, jealous, irritated, annoyed, and say, fuck this friendship, I'm getting my title back, let's fight. And if that happens, I'm going to just sit here and say, I told you so. I told you so. And again, I hope Aljamain proves me wrong in this instance too. I hope that if things play out that way, that he proves me wrong and that he sits out on the sidelines and he waits 
for someone to defeat Marab for him to go and fight for the title. So to me, that's another reason why I think that Aljamain is saying, Marab, you know, good old buddy, my amazing old friend that I love so much. You've been so great to me. Would you mind, you know, sitting out on the sidelines for a few more months until after I have this rematch with Sean? Because if he beats me again, then I'll really just walk away. Because think about this. Think about this. Could you imagine? Late, let's say, boom. Dana's like, all right, I'll give you guys the immediate rematch. I want to see Sean kick your ass again. But Aljamain wins. Then what? Then what? Because I don't think that Aljamain or anyone really right now is thinking about that. Everyone's like, okay, yeah, DC is like, oh yeah, he deserves his immediate rematch. But what happens if Aljamain becomes a champ again? Marab is not going to fight him. So Marab has to yet again wait for someone to defeat Aljamain to fight the champ? Are you kidding me? That's what I don't think that people are realizing. Is that if Aljamain gets the rematch that he wants and he defeats Sean and he gets his title back, what does that mean for Marab? He'll fight Sean, but he'll fight him at the number one contender. He's not going to fight Aljamain. He still is not going to have a title shot, which is just not fair. It's just not fair. I'm going to skip to this really quick because today, the day that I'm filming this, uh, Michael Bisping posted an interview that he did with Sean where he explicitly asked him his opinion on the situation. He asked him, who do you want to fight next? And Sean said, technically, it would make sense for me to fight Marab, right? Because he's number one contender. But I want to fight Cheeto. So we'll touch on that in a little bit. He wants to fight Cheeto, but he admitted that technically it should be Marab. Like if he's if he's not going to get to fight Cheeto, if something happens that he can't fight Cheeto, then yeah, I will fight Marab because he's the number one contender and that's what makes sense to do. But he did not say, yeah, I'll do a rematch with Aljamain. Michael Bisping mentioned like Aljamain's been talking about uh, having an immediate rematch. You know, he's calling for an immediate rematch. Like who is it that you want to fight next? And he did not ever get back to that. He never touched on that part of the question. He just said, I want to fight Cheeto. Technically, it would make sense to fight Marab, but I want to fight Cheeto because it makes sense story-wise. And, or I think Michael Bisping said that it makes sense story-wise, but Sean said, you know, this is just the fight that I want. It's the fight that the fans want because Chelsea Sonnen posted a poll and 51% uh, of people said that the next person that Sean should fight is Cheeto and the very last person with I think like maybe 15% of people said that he should fight Henry. The fans want to see Sean fight Cheeto but Sean admitted like yeah if it's not Cheeto then it's it's got to be Marab because he's number one but he did not say I will rematch Aljo. I am open to a rematch with Aljo. He didn't say it. He didn't say it and we all know but the champ wants the champ gets. And especially with Dana being in this man's corner, I think the champ's gonna get what he wants. He's gonna get, a get he's gonna get a fight against Cheeto, or he's gonna get a fight against Marab. But he's not gonna rematch Aljamain, especially with the way that Dana feels about Aljamain. Not gonna happen. Sorry, it's gonna have to be that Sean is gonna, you know, let's just say in this case that he wipes the division clean. That he's gonna have these people coming to fight him, coming to fight him, and when there's really no one left competitively that makes sense but like obviously he's not going to fight number 15 fighter but if he fights a number five a number six a number four and none of them beat him then boom well, let's do a, a, a rematch let's see if the ex-champ can put the new champ in his place right but immediately dude immediately a rematch immediately a rematch does not make sense to me so yeah that's my take Basically, let me know what you think. Let me know who you think Sean should fight next. I think a lot of people would agree it should be Cheeto. I just think that would be a fun fight. Considering that it is Sean's only loss, even though he claims on Twitter that he's 18-0 and that he's undefeated and all this other stuff. Sean is not. He is 17-1. Um, he lost to Cheeto Vera. Um, I think he's saying that because even the commentators were like, mm, that's a questionable stoppage because Herb Dean stopped the fight once Cheeto basically TKO'd him on the ground because again he's a ref he's right there looking at Sean's face he must have seen that Sean went out of consciousness and ultimately the ref's job is to protect the fighter 
and you know if Sean was actually unconscious the ref's not going to allow Cheeto to keep hammer fisting him into oblivion you need to stop the fight but again Joe Rogan said that and he's been doing this since literally the day I was born probably sooner actually before I was born because UFC started 1993 I'm pretty sure he's been there since day one so he's been doing this forever who knows what I'm talking about he says it was an early stoppage maybe it was an early stoppage but either way the record book says that it is a loss so opinion or not on whether he lost that fight it's on his record he's not 18 and 0 he is 17 and 1 and so that's another reason why obviously he would want to fight Cheeto is because it's a way to avenge his loss right um so you know we'll see we will see what will happen let me know what you think obviously this is a pretty important situation that's going on because these are the three top men in the Bantamweight division right now so kind of what goes on between them does really speak for the future of the division um especially considering Aljamain said that he was going to move up I just want to reiterate that Aljamain said multiple times he was going to move up in weight win lose or draw and now that plan is Oh my gosh, I lost and I'm still going to let my ego get in the way and I think that I can defeat Sean. So I want an immediate rematch because God forbid morale become the champ, then what am I going to do? I'm really not going to be able to do anything. Because think about it, if he said that he doesn't think that he could beat Volk, at least right now in present day, he's not going to get a featherweight. I'm pretty sure 145 is featherweight. But before I misspeak, that could be featherweight. Hey, it is featherweight. Okay, I remember my shit. So, he's not going to get a featherweight belt. And if he's sticking to this, I'm not ever fighting my friend Marab shit that he's on, he wouldn't be able to fight Marab with the Bantamweight belt. Which means he would not be a champ at all, period. Which we know Aljamain's ego would never let him do that. So that's why I think he wants his rematch so badly. Because he can't fathom the fact that Marab could possibly become champ. Because if he does, he's not going to be a champ in either division. Unless he takes the risk, takes the risk, moves up to 145, and I'm almost done, my mom, I'm almost done. Moves up to 145 and gets his ass beat. But you know what? Not my problem. I'm just here to talk about it. <laughs> um, I'm really excited for UFC 293. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of Sean Strickland. Um, you know. I, Adesanya has grown on me for sure. I didn't really like his personality for a long time and I still really don't but I admire him as a fighter and his attitude when it comes to fighting and to his career and to achieving his dreams. It's definitely very inspirational. So in that sense, I know my mom's starving too. My stomach's rumbling. So he's grown on me in that sense. So I am going to be going for Adesanya, Adesanya in this fight. Um, but yeah, we'll see what else happens, what other news comes out, who tweets what, who posts what, what's going to go on from here on out. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think. If Aljamain or Sean or Marab or Henry or anyone sees this video, advocate for yourselves in your own careers. You know, Sean like makes fun of Henry a lot for like saying, oh, he should be fighting X, Y, and Z and this and that. But at least he advocates for himself. You know what I mean? Marab, if you are watching this fight. Habibti. Habibi. I know you're not Middle Eastern. But love. I already told him this. But love. If you are seeing this video. Please. Advocate for yourself. You want to feel that level of happiness. That Adesanya has felt again and again and again and again. You want to be champ. If you see how badly your friend, Aljamain, wants to remain champ, you gotta know how great that feeling is. And you should want that for yourself. Advocate for yourself. Knock on Dana White's door and say, after Cheeto and Sean fight, I want my title shot. Do not give the rematch to Aljamain.
you need to advocate for yourself my guy you've been doing this guy too many favors you've been let's pretend this is a too much too much in my opinion you're doing too nice i don't know what the culture is like in georgia where you come from and how people are nice but over here in new york that is not how we do things that is not how we do things okay we do not that is not how we do things so if you've got your best friend as a New Yorker, take after him, be selfish. Be selfish, advocate for yourself. Don't be on here posting on your Instagram stories, Aljamain's story. Don't be reposting his stories and agreeing, or sorry, don't be reposting his post agreeing like, oh yeah, Aljamain, da, da, da. whatever Aljamain said. Don't be reposting that. Advocate for yourself. I promise you, you are not a bad friend for wanting to advance your career. Because clearly, Aljamain is doing exactly that. And no one's calling him a bad friend. I am. But you're not. No one in your camp and your team is not is calling him a bad friend. But yeah, dude. Come on. Do it for yourself. Do it for yourself. I want to see you be champ. I'm sure you have a lot of other fans. Your own country. I'm sure they're... Imagine... Would he not be the first Georgian UFC champ in history? Do you not want that? Do you not want that? There's been plenty of New York fighters. There's been plenty of Long Island fighters. There's been plenty of Jamaican fighters. But not Georgian. So advocate for yourself. Advocate for your people. Advocate for your own career. This is your time now. Aljamain had a shot. He's been champ for a long time. He had the chance to defend it against Sean. He lost. He can get that chance in the future, not right now. It's your time to shine, dude. Let's go.